This is called the American Renaissance, the period between 1850 and 1855, when the great works of Melville, Hawthorne, Walt Whitman, Henry David Thoreau, even the very early poems of Emily Dickinson, and just before this, uh, the great works of Edgar Allan Poe, all these things concentrated in one moment. What I believe is that the period itself is so incredibly rich. Um, you have so many uh, different political, social, cultural strands kind of coming together. Uh, and you have a kind of sense of democracy. These great works like Moby Dick, Leaves of Grass, even Walden, uh, were written by people who were, in a way, left unleashed by their democracy. You had uh, so many people back then that believed in something that we, we tend to forget today, which is self-taught. Uh, Melville said that a whale ship was my Yale College and my Harvard. Melville was self-taught about Shakespeare and philosophy just because he was very intellectually curious and he produces this masterpiece which combines the ancient sources like Shakespeare and Greek myth and everything in the Bible with uh, so many images from modern American life. Walt Whitman didn't go beyond age 11 in school and yet he uses a vocabulary, a range of vocabulary, second only to Shakespeare. These people fed their own minds. Frederick Douglass, in his narrative, Frederick Douglass didn't have an ounce of education, and yet I wish I could write the way Frederick Douglass writes. It's just, just such beautiful prose. There was such a thing as, as just teaching yourself, feeding your own mind, feeding your own mind. Uh, and um, whereas later on, when things become more institutionalized, people become a little more passive, I think. And maybe their creativity is not unleashed quite as much, and maybe they don't have to uh, feed themselves as much intellectually.